Uh, so we want to talk about uh, one of some of the pressing issues of, of the industry, which are scalability and how, how we actually uh, get to uh, worldwide adoption uh, of, the, of blockchain in the industry. Uh, but before we start, I'd like to maybe uh, do a mental exercise. So why don't we all uh, shut our eyes? Maybe some in the audience are already, have already practiced that. Um, and, uh, and take a fast forward five years and blockchain is dead. Where did we go wrong? Five years forward, where, where we are? Five years from now, if, if blockchain is dead, what did we do wrong? If blockchain is dead, that's fine. Bitcoin is still alive, no? <laughs> No, we are, uh, actually I realized uh, that we are probably at the end of the blockchain, not Bitcoin hype, and uh, kind of like there's a sobering up after the past few years. I'm very grateful for that because people start to kind of focus on important stuff and a lot of, uh, not just individuals, but even uh, companies, corporations start to realize that Bitcoin, in fact, is the important uh, first layer, and um, um, we will probably get more attention and more development and more adoption just simply because of more focus. And five years ahead, I have no idea. If you ask me when I joined Bitcoin, like where it's going, or if you even ask me last year, what's the price of Bitcoin going to be? I was like, maybe. Uh, 2000, like two years ago, maybe 2000, the end of the year, you know, <laughs> and um, so I'm very bad at predictions, but I have some uh, ideas where it should go. Thank you. Yeah, okay, so I of course agree with Elena, but we need to remember that before the word blockchain was a buzzword, it was a technical term in how Bitcoin works, right? Uh, Bitcoin is based on a chain of blocks. That's actually in Satoshi's original white paper. He did not use the word blockchain. He did say chain of blocks. So that's what the blockchain was before people started having all sorts of crazy ideas for what else this uh, concept might be used for. So going back to the question, I think if if the blockchain is dead, then Bitcoin is also dead because Bitcoin relies on the original blockchain. And I think um, if that happens, I, I don't think it will be in five years, but maybe sometime in the future Bitcoin is dead. It probably might be not necessarily because we did something wrong or we went wrong, but because the original idea maybe did not pan out the way we thought it would, which uh, basically goes down to to the actual innovation, which is how proof of work was used for mining, for synchronizing transactions. And actually, in the future, the way Bitcoin will work will be diff very different from what it is now, because right now, there are new coins generated every block, and that's what fi is funding the mining. In the future, we will not have that. We'll only have transaction fees, and it's not at all clear that the transaction fees will be enough to sponsor all the mining because as we all know if uh, if there is a majority of hash rate by a malicious party then there are all sorts of bad attacks they can do on bitcoin so we need enough miners to make it difficult for someone to amass a majority of the network for that they need to be funded they need to be fees it's not clear um, whether the ecosystem at large will be willing to pay enough fees to sponsor everyone, and, uh, and it's not clear, even if there is a willingness to pay fees, it's not cl clear how to collect them, because there is a tragedy of the commons problem, right? Everyone wants the network uh, to work, everyone wants fees to be paid, nobody wants to be the one that pays the fees, everyone wants everyone else to pay the fees. So there are some challenges in that regard, and uh, and yes, I think that's one of the major issues that might uh, turn out differently than what we expected, simply for the reason that it's a new model for how Bitcoin works, which is not how it works now. So that's, that remains to be seen how this will play out. Thank you. Do you want to add something? Uh, yeah, so first, since you mentioned the 
the issue with fees, I have to, to mention a, a recent result uh, by uh, Itai Sabari in my lab, uh, showing that, in fact, we really do rely very strongly on the block subsidy for incentives. If we move to a world where there are only fees and uh, there's not enough, uh, there are not enough transactions waiting in line, we're going to have serious issues with incentive compatibility in Bitcoin. Uh, this applies to other currencies, but in Bitcoin, we estimate we might be seeing issues in, in uh, as little as 10 years. So this is something to think about. Uh, block subsidy is critical. To, to uh, Agada's question, the success of the blockchain technology has ignited a lot of uh, research on Byzantine fault tolerance and incentives in Byzantine environments or rational environments, uh, security and distributed systems and cryptography. And I think that even if the blockchain doesn't become what it looks like right now in five or ten years, the development that rises from it is going to create new systems, better systems down the line. Thank you. So um, I think in a, you're all in the industry from uh, very early on. Uh, I'm interested to know uh, when you look back uh, and you see kind of waves of adoption uh, or waves of um, uh, people getting familiar with the industry, what drove uh, those in instances, what drove people to get interested, and uh, when you think about that and your your role through through this uh, gradual adoption, uh, I think in 2017, where everybody, when everybody really around the world started talking about it, from private investors to your uh, taxi driver to hedge funds and banks and governments, uh, we all had this expectation that finally people are adopting it and there is finally going to be usage of, of, uh, of Bitcoin or, or other cryptos and that really hasn't happened yet uh, as we expected. So what is now uh, kind of what are now the challenges or what is preventing uh, us from really seeing mass adoption? I think uh, two things. One is the user interface. Like uh, I was in this uh, business since 1972 when I was a programmer, a Fortran programmer in Tel Aviv University. And uh, the teacher, the professor told us that the world will need in the year 2000 just 10,000 uh, compu computers. In 2000, 10,000 computers. And then came Steve Jobs and he said that computers are for the rest of us. And he did it. We just dream about it here in 1972. And uh, he did it. And then I asked myself two years ago, because I'm there in, since 1972, and it's happened in 78, 81 with a personal computer. It's happened in 92 since Tim Berners-Lee with the internet. And now it's happened again. We see two things. One is user interface for the rest of us. It still doesn't exist in the blockchain, in the Bitcoin. It doesn't exist yet. And the other thing is the infrastructure that I'm not so big expert, and the other is much bigger expert to, to speak about the infrastructure. But as the one told us, uh, the expert told us there will be 10,000 computers. Then in the, in the year 1988, after 16 years, we have only one email in all Tel Aviv University. And there is one that uh, operates this email, and he told me to wait for something from Australia to wait one week. And we all of us think that internet is uh, email, and email is the internet. No one dream about Facebook or Google or Amazon. And I think that still now, no one still dream about the Amazon of the, of the Bitcoin or the Amazon of the blockchain or the Facebook of the blockchain. So many tried, and I invest in Facebook of blockchain since uh, the year 2016, but it didn't succeed. So uh, uh, if we develop the user interface, uh, this will be the big uh, jump, jump from, I know, from 50 million to 500 million. And as in the uh, Bitcoin party uh, last week came 
1,000 people or more, and here come 1,000 people or more, the next party and the next conference will be at least 10,000 people, because when I look at the last 10 years, I see it, ex it jump exponentially uh, uh, from two, 100 uh, to 100 price, to three, 1,000 to four, 10,000 dollar a Bitcoin or more, and it's like the mushrooms. Mushroom is bi biological system. The Bitcoin is a biological system, and if you want to understand it, every three years, the mushroom jump outside, and every three years, I, I look back, every three years, it jump from 100, 1,000, 10,000 and more, and uh, if I made the extrapolation, it means that in the year 20, 2021 to 2022, it will be at least, at least, at least 100,000. Uh, and till that time, the infrastructure will be developed, the user interface will be developed, and we are living in, a, in, an, in an organism. Some time ago, Bitcoin started getting a lot of media attention and the price skyrocketed to an all-time high extreme value of $32. That was in 2011 and it, uh, as far as I recall, it was clear to me back then that Bitcoin was not ready for this kind of attention. I mean, there were a lot of people talking about it and some of the people in the Bitcoin community felt that, okay, yeah, we finally succeeded. Now, yeah, everyone is hearing about it. Now Bitcoin is going to be used everywhere. And it was clear to me that it was not ready for that and it would not end well and, uh, yeah, and, uh, and that something bad would happen. And it did, right, mostly in terms of the price. Uh, you know, the price uh, plummeted down back to $2 per Bitcoin. And, uh, yeah, and then the media, which uh, earlier uh, covered it with a lot of enthusiasm. Now there were articles, the rise and fall of Bitcoin and things like that. And uh, people who gi were giving eulogies on Bitcoin rights. So actually now there's a website, uh, Bitcoin Obituaries, which lists all the, peop all the times that someone uh, said that Bitcoin is dead. And uh, Bitcoin uh, has died many times now. And, uh, and yeah, so I, what I'm saying is that we had the latest uh, bubble of 2017 where the price went out to $20,000 and there was much more media coverage than back in 2011. But for me, it was even then clear that this is not the, the final stretch. It's another step in the way and more people heard about Bitcoin, but still most people, even if they've heard about Bitcoin, they have, they have absolutely no idea what it is. And even people who bought Bitcoin in the height of the bubble of 2017, had no idea what it is that they're buying, and uh, that's something you could feel by, you know, being in a place like uh, the Bitcoin Embassy, which was crowded with people coming to buy Bitcoins, and you could see that they don't really understand what they're doing. So it's not at all surprising that, of course, the bubble burst and the price went down, and the media coverage is now more uh, pessimistic, and a lot of people think uh, people has died again. Uh, but, you know, after you've been through this cycle for a while, you don't get too excited about it. Uh, so that's just another step in the way. And uh, similarly to what Asher said, so we will have more cycles like, it, like this in the future. Each time more and more people hear about it, more and more people understand it. And Bitcoin itself is ready, right? So Bitcoin in 2017 was not ready for, um, for this mass adoption in many aspects, and it was mostly noticeable in the technical scalability, right? Back then, uh, we were at the height of the scalability wars. Uh, Segwit was just getting in. Lightning Network was mostly an idea. So a lot of people tried to use Bitcoin, mostly by Bitcoin. And uh, there was not enough room in the blocks for all these transactions, and you had sometimes to pay $100 fees just to get a transaction in. So it was obvious that back then, Bitcoin was not ready for this. Bitcoin is now more ready than it was back then, but there's still a lot of work to do, both in scalability, so yeah. So Lightning Network is coming along nicely, and in the, in the party that we had on Thursday celebrating 10 years of Bitcoin, one of the main design themes was Lightning Network because it has progressed so nicely. So there are scalability challenges, there are regulation challenges, and there's education challenges, adoption challenges. There are a lot of challenges, and 
we just need to, you know, move on all fronts and progress and the work. And over time, Bitcoin will be more and more ready for the people. And the people will be more and more ready for Bitcoin. And that, that will be when Bitcoin will finally succeed truly. You know what's funny that uh, the investors that bought at, at the all-time high now are selling or not are not willing to buy more. So this is the opportunity to buy, right? And it's not just individual investors; it's also like businesses and big investors that are getting rid of Bitcoin right now. I don't really understand. I'm not an investor. I'm not a professional. So maybe there's some magic behind it that I don't see, right? Um, anyway, the, 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 the scaling, you know, or the, the attention, I, I mean, many, I agree with you, you know, it's, it's for, the, for the masses, it's mostly about the price, that's what's causing attention, or uh, the social circumstances. So in Venezuela, obviously people um, uh, did not get rich, I tweeted it today, did not get rich on uh, petrol and the, the amazing, you know, richness that they have in the ground. But maybe they will get uh, wealthy on on Bitcoin because they were pushed by the situation to to start using it. Um, um, so we are like Bitcoin is ready to scale on a, on a technical level. I don't think it's ready yet to scale or I, I'm hopeful that this year will be uh, the year of uh, better usability. So it's not about the technology that much. I mean, there's still a ton of stuff to be developed and, and done, but uh, it's more about like uh, how is the experience of my mom when she wants to use it? Does she really have to know that there's Bitcoin in order to use it? That's a question. Uh, do we have to show the keys and in their formats? You know, little things like that. And I'm hopeful that we will see a lot of um, integrations with big brands, with big uh, merchants. Um, you know, Square did uh, the Cash App. Um, I, why wouldn't the merchants that they have contracted be able to sell Bitcoin? And you know, so we are talking about mass adoption and, and merchant adoption, but we need to see how to get Bitcoin to people in a seeming less way, right? So they don't have to go sign up to exchanges and, and purchase, but go to your shop, you know, and get the cash back in Bitcoin. For example, I agree with you. Um, okay, so I just wanted to mention uh, something uh, because the party uh, was mentioned twice, and many actually taught us all a dance at the party. So if we're lucky, by the end of this panel, he'll teach us the dance. Um, I know uh, if, a part if, of the dance if, we if practiced you, last night. Sorry? <laughs> we practiced the dance last exactly. night. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about um, uh, user experience and how we get our moms to use, uh, to use Bitcoin without even knowing maybe that there is Bit Bitcoin behind it or how we get uh, people to, to actually engage. Uh, but before then, we, uh, we, I think we want to talk about the, the scalability issue, uh, which is... Um, on the, t on, on the technical side. So uh, scalability has always come uh, on the expense of, uh, of, uh, of other things in the blockchain, uh, decentralization and privacy and security. Um, and uh, so the question is, you know, as these networks become more and more decentralized, Bitcoin is, is uh, you know, the most some will say decentralized um, to implementation of uh, uh, improvements to the blockchain or making it more scale or actions to make it more scalable become harder and har harder and harder to implement because of um, the consensus mechanisms that are uh, that are associated with these blockchain and we've seen uh, a few forks, a few hard forks. Uh, two of them are uh, on, on the ten uh, uh, most uh, valuable coins on Coin Market Cap. Uh, it's confusing to our moms: Bitcoin, Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin whatever. Um, and it's also destructive to uh, to Bitcoin value. Uh, so the question is. 
how do we actually, or how does it actually, how do you envision it actually improving and adopting uh, uh, modifications to the, to the blockchain to make it more scalable? And maybe, and I'll dare to say it in this, on this panel, but maybe uh, better to just scratch that and start a new blockchain uh, or adopt a fork or, um, or, uh, or just add uh, layers on top that are, uh, that are making it more scalable. Well, I just wanted to mention the cross-chain atomic swaps on behalf of like mul multitude of, uh, of uh, crypto uh, and that may be confusing. So potentially in the future we could just, you know, I accept Alena coins. I didn't do ICO yet, but will, I will, I promise. Uh, so when I accept Alena coins, then you can just send me whatever and I will receive Alena coin on my end. So that's one of the, the, the exciting stuff that, you know, I was actually envisioning when I found out about Bitcoin. That was 2010 and I was thinking, oh, this is probably the future of like a global uh, settlement ledger or transactional ledger. And we will probably have a, a, a plethora of, of different coins, you know, that will be purpose specific or location specific. Little, the, little I knew that ICOs are coming. Um, anyway, so I, I envision really this, uh, the, the, the swaps would make it easier and not have you think like, oh, I want to use this and I need that token or coin or whatnot. So, but you wanted to add something. Uh, I, w I wanted to talk a little bit about about uh, s scaling scaling blockchains. I guess uh, so. S second tier solutions like Lightning and TeChain they enable us to go m much higher, to much higher rates and much lower frequencies. But they have different security guarantees than actually running on the blockchain itself, and they themselves uh, require more capacity at the blockchain level if we really want to reach massive adoption worldwide. So uh, at some point, if this takes off really, then we'll need a much a bigger ship, a much faster blockchain. And this is possible to do. I mean, we do it in the lab, orders of magnitude, blockchains decentralized in any manner that are orders of magnitude faster and better bandwidth, better latency than what we see in most operational networks. Some companies uh, picked up our Bitcoin and G protocol, uh, Eternity, Waves, and they're running the fastest blockchains out there and they're already uh, even faster, faster alternatives. Um, there is Avalanche and we are in the process of working to make this ev even more or orders of magnitude quicker. So the future is going to allow us to really run blockchains at a rate that currently might seem unimaginable. Uh, regarding the making changes and updating a blockchain, I think that the fact that this is hard is very good. Uh, and blockchains that are difficult to update are blockchains that are actually decentralized. If the update goes too easy, probably means that there is a small number of people that are able to make uh, to make decisions this is not always bad but uh, you should look at the at the board of the coin if it's defined if it's not an, or, or if it's not well defined and realize how decentralized that coin really is yeah okay so that was a long question with a lot of different issues to unpack so i think uh, it i addressed the scalability they issue. asked me only to ask five questions so i bundled everything <laughs> in and now yeah. you, you, now the challenge is yours yes yeah, yeah, so, so yes yeah, so i think it i covered the scalability issue nicely i mean i think we will need both um you know second layer solutions like lightning that's absolutely critical we also need the the base layer the on-chain protocol to have a bit higher capacity. I mean, I did some estimates uh, sometimes that even if everyone uses Lightning Network, the, the, the Bitcoin blocks will still need to be about 100 times bigger than they are now. But that, of course, will be needed in the really long term, in 40 years, when really everyone will use that. And uh, of course, by that time, hardware will be better. We'll have some better protocols. And, uh, and unlike Itai, I'm not sure we need 
a radical change in the, how the protocol works. We can have the same ideas, but with a few tweaks, a few parameters that are changing, a few upgrades, like I'm, I'm a fan of the idea of elastic block caps, which can help uh, the, the transactions fees be a bit more stable, even when the blocks are getting full. So we will need both lightning and um, on-chain improvements. And, uh, but actually you mentioned the forking and the big cache and all that, and uh, I think it's important to know that the scalability wars have not been about scalability for a long time. I mean, it started maybe in uh, 2015 with some arguments about how Bitcoin will scale and so on, but quickly the debate was not really about that and it was more of a power struggle. Now, uh, different people who have different opinions on what the power struggle was, exactly. I'm, I'm of the opinion that there was Bitcoin that has, you know, ideological values of decentralization and how the, the development is made and how decisions are made, which is kind of pure and effective. And this is the original open source vision. And on the other hand, there were some people trying to manipulate it to get more power for themselves. And I think that's what happened mostly with the Bcash, right? I mean, Bcash was, was founded on people who actually believed Bcash has better scalability solutions, but the people who fueled this fire did it out of their personal interest. And it didn't work out that well for them. They did not manage to secure control of the whole Bitcoin. We have still Bitcoin, which is a major currency, and it's still decentralized. And we have the Bcash, which is much more centralized. And now we have it again, where Bcash is split to Bcash ABC and Bcash SV. And still, it's about the power struggle. But uh, so it is, you know, of course, confusing to people. But I don't think, um, uh, you know, the average person should care too much about these things. Uh, they should probably just focus on Bitcoin and the actual currency, which is both enjoys the most network effects and is truest to the original values of the Bitcoin idea. Uh, so, so yeah, so there's that. And one more thing, in Bitcoin itself, like I said, there will be needed some protocol changes, which is a bit challenging because in Bitcoin's 10 years of existence, it did not have a lot of protocol changes and each change was pretty hard to get consensus on. But I'm, uh, I think I'm, uh, it's not going to be such a problem. Maybe I'm overly optimistic, but I think if there is a change that is clear, clearly needed and is clearly an improvement, I think over time people will agree on it and we don't need to worry too much about the protocol being frozen. It can adapt if there are actual reasons to do it and not just FUD. Thank you. Uh, so I have my last question now because I'm, I've been marked. So I'm gonna, again, bundle a bunch of questions into one. Um, so we talked about scalability and assuming uh, that that issue is resolved. Uh, I think uh, the next thing to talk about is how, assuming it's scalable, we also uh, generate mass adoption. And mass adoption is mostly, uh, it mostly needs an app or a D app or something that uh, people use. So the question is, um, what is, what are, first of all, what is your uh, killer app of the blockchain? Uh, and, uh, and what are the challenges and, and opportunities with building apps? Because uh, I think uh, for myself at least, uh, we used to think that uh, it's enough for, for an app, a regular app or, uh, an irregular app to just be on the blockchain and just as good as the apps that are out there. But I think uh, we've realized that it's not, not, not enough for them to be just as good. They have to be much better. So to bundle, what are the challenges? What is the opportunity and what is your killer app? May I start? I think Bitcoin is the killer app of blockchain. Um, and as I said, thank you. Um, I see you agree. That's good. Uh, I already uh, suggested some, like uh, how to get, uh, you know, a few more millions uh, or a billion uh, users on by, you know, just uh, companies that have that scale already. And it's just easy to, now it's easy. And now it makes sense for them to start uh, building in uh, Bitcoin. So I'm extremely positive about 2019. 
and um, challenges is patience. I think patience is something that like we that are working uh, in this business sometimes we lack or some people that you know jump in as investment opportunity and then they get excited and they hopeful that you know we all kind of got a little bit of hopium right um, we are running on hopium right? we want this to, to succeed but we also need to have perseverance so when you look at I you know cars right in the late 19th century the, the first cars were terrible they would they would break all the time there was no infrastructure, there were no roads, there were no petrol and gas stations, and, and there was, you know, it, it came even to a point where regulators wanted to stifle it. In the US there was this red flag, uh, cheers, um, the, where, where a person had to walk in front of the car to signal some danger, right? <laughs> so, you see, it, it took decades, decades, to internet how much? Like, until we are on the smartphones, it's 30 years, right? 20? I sure would That's, know. Right? So, it's happening. Don't worry, it's happening. I think it's uh, deterministic. Everyone do programmers, uh, miners. We are just part of the mushroom networks, the bi biological organic network. It's deterministic. Uh, we know from the book uh, Scale of Waste, he, he make research about biological system, how to scale them from uh, a cat to a human being to an elephant. And he sees that in biological system and in Bitcoin, uh, we have a rule, universal rule, that if we invest scale three, like 1,000, we can get jump or scale of uh, 10,000. It's in biological and Bitcoin, but in cities we have to invest three and a half in order to get four, and in a company, in an army, in a bank, we have to invest 95% uh, uh, in order to make it, to scale it, to big, make, it, make it bigger to 100%. So why uh, Bitcoin and organism we have to scale so little in the infrastructure. For example, in the city, the infrastructure is roads. In the, in the biological system, it's uh, neurons, uh, the blood uh, system. W why we have to, to invest so uh, little amount of infrastructure in order to, to scale it? And the answer of this important, very important uh, book, that uh, everything that is decentralized can scale fast in the long run, but also in the short run, it seems like uh, decentralization stops scaling. No, it's not true. It's, it's in the long run, in the four, five years, uh, this centralized system jump in exponential, uh, like we say before, from 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 100,000 in the year 2021, 22. Uh, and uh, it is, um, uh, deterministic because everything that is decentralized uh, and why? Because we know from biology already that uh, the DNA, we have billions of DNA copies and it's redundancy and it's stupid, but uh, we have the same in the uh, blockchain that uh, everyone can have, every miner or user or node can have it in his computer or in his smartphone, 200 giga. It's exactly the like DNA. And no one answer from uh, 1953, uh, no one answer why we need millions of DNA. I think now we know the answer. And the answer is that when a system is decentralized, it can be like a mushroom. It can jump uh, exponentially all the time and then sit on all the rules of the exponent since um, Moore law to Metcalf law to Eric Schmidt uh, law of the cloud. Uh, we have to think, think different, like what Steve Jobs say. What is your killer app? What's the what's the best use case for blockchain that the you best? see now? The, the killer, the one for 2019. What would be the? I really don't know one? because I I am I'm a philosopher. I'm not a programmer. I'm not like the, these people, but I know the history since '72, and I know that it's deterministic. It's biological system. We are just little cells. 
of this biological system, it's not depend on us. It's, I, I see since 1972 that this system, we are living in a matrix. It's bigger than us, it's stronger than us, it don't ask us, and it just happened we have to be hodler. We have to believe it like we believe in religion. And we will be the hodler where the people put the water in this tree, uh, the food of, for this tree, that's all. It will happen deterministically. Itai. So uh, I think maybe I'll start from the end. I think the, the killer app for now is, is uh, money. We haven't seen the, the next killer app yet as far as I know. And it, it's great, sorry? I don't buy that. I don't buy time stamping yet. But uh, <laughs> I, I think money at this point, and and seeing seeing the the, the community here, I think it gives me a lot of optimism on a lot of people looking for that for that app, and we'll see it eventually. I think scaling is critical uh, f uh, for adoption, and uh, while you can get scaling easily by tuning parameters, like many mentioned, if you want to get orders of magnitude better, but you don't want to lose security, then you do need to make some some changes. But uh, I, th I think the, the central thing to overcome at this point for real adoption is security. So if you've been paying attention, the, the, the largest uh, institutional investors in the world have been spending 2018 uh, figuring out how to hold cryptocurrencies for themselves and for their clients. Uh, this, this is adoption. <laughs> When this becomes, uh, w when they start actually doing this at scale, this this is adoption, uh, and they will run into issues with uh, security. The same issues we run as uh, individuals who store their own coins, of course, at uh, d different parameters, but still the same issues. And uh, we will need new new solutions for that. So, so shared secret reshuffling that Elena mentioned in in her talk is one element. I think um, support from the blockchain in uh, uh, Bitcoin vaults that can actually be implemented easily in Ethereum today but cannot be implemented in Bitcoin today uh, can help with that and there will be other techniques. And if we figure this out, I think adoption will uh, come right in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I think to answer the... To answer the question, we really need to get to the heart of the issue, which we've also mentioned earlier in the panel about Bitcoin versus non-Bitcoin usage of blockchain. Now, I do believe that uh, the ideas of blockchain can be used not just for money, not just for Bitcoin. And then I mentioned timestamping. There are some other ideas. I think um, digital representations of stocks are a good use case for um, uh, for blockchains which are not Bitcoin. But uh, these are a bit. Uh, found few between, and the way the industry right now thinks about the concept of blockchain is a bit backwards, and the, way, the actual way you phrase the question makes the whole blockchain thing seem like a solution looking for a problem, right? So you say, okay, blockchain is a solution, so now let's find the problem for it, but that's kind of backwards because it's not at all clear that blockchain in general is a solution, and I am of the opinion that a lot of the talk about uh, the concept of blockchain is kind of a cargo cult. It's, uh, you know, it's taking something which is a technical part of how Bitcoin works, which is based on uh, certain ideas and ideologies and so on, and trying to take it and transplant it to some place where it doesn't belong at all. So you basically just have the outer shell without the things of sub substance within. So that's what happens uh, currently in the industry that people try to stick blockchain on anything. So, like I said, it's not clear that there is a killer app for blockchain. It's not clear that we need one. But if we, if we answered, and like people said before, the killer app of blockchain is money, is Bitcoin. That's, that's what the technology was built for. That's what it's best at doing. And I think money is an important enough thing that uh, it can be a killer app for this technology even if it has other users. And the way I, I see it, once everyone gets used to the idea of using Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies as money, it will be much me is easier to implement other users for the blockchain. And for Bitcoin itself, I don't think there really is a killer app for Bitcoin. I mean, money is pretty ubiquitous. Everyone uses money. 
everyone would prefer their money to work better, faster, easier, more efficient. And I think it's, uh, there's no single kill up, it's just more and more adoption and more uh, knowledge and more activity. And that's what uh, sets the seed for other uses of te technology. Thank you very much to everybody. Uh, I would open for questions, but only if it's really important because we have to leave the stage. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.